Solace developed to try and befriend and support people that had addictions where other service delivery agents maybe weren't involved. Well, Solace is a place where myself and a few other lads come uh, to try to get a bit of a hobby like this and uh, help to keep us away from the drink because uh, we've all got drink problems or addiction problems of some kind. So this is a place where, you know, like Solace, a place peace and quiet, get away from all the, the drinking scene and hopefully keep off the alcohol. Solace has been very successful and much of that I think has to be attributed to the ethos that exists. You'll see it's a very homely atmosphere. People come in and uh, they have something to eat, they have somebody that cares about them, so it's a very holistic service. And through that service people have had the opportunity to engage in education programmes, additional services, complementary therapies, and it's, it's been very significant in, in supporting people um, to live and manage their lives and their addiction. Sally's Wood in the past had many difficulties and local residents were very instrumental in trying to address that negativity. The planting uh, at the entrance to the estate and the stones that are carved, and uh, that's the work of local people and local agencies coming together and the children came up with the designs that you see uh, on the stones. One of the main challenges now is to meet the expectation that exists within the community at this point. Because ARC has been very successful now, people expect uh, and deserve a service and we have to meet and manage that expectation. Well, I think what's important about this year is it's given us a chance to look back at what the trustees that have gone before us have achieved and in fact remember what innovators they were themselves in their time and that we've quite a high standard to live up to. And we should be thinking of, of how we're going to innovate um, now, you know, during our period. Last November, the, the trustees, along with ITEC, ran a visioning exercise where they invited local business people, politicians, and members of the trustee and ITEC boards to discuss what sort of a future we wanted for Irvine's town. And some quite interesting possibilities came up. We're running a fair day on the 16th of July and uh, I think a modern or a reinterpretation of the old fair day would be the farmers markets and there's a lot of activity locally in the area where people are trying to promote this and I think Irvinstown would be an ideal spot with its broad main street, its history of fair days. During our visioning exercise that we had in November, one of the aspects that the trustees and the local business people identified as being missing was the lack of a strong Chamber of Commerce uh, to promote the interests of the town and take it forward into the next decade. Uh, I think that under the auspices of the trustees that we could perhaps set up a subcommittee of local traders and business people and our shared expertise should enable us to take the town forward and celebrate its uniqueness. The trustees have been very active in lobbying the council and any interest groups and politicians in trying to promote Nikarn as the excellent venue that we know is there. Quite recently, Jenny, our chief executive, made contact with a surviving member of the original Irvine family and um, sent them information because they, like us, would like to see the estate restored to its former glory and been made a facility for everyone to be able to use. Well, the Irvinstown Trustee Centenary Project is living heritage because what Irvinstown is celebrating is a hundred years of the trustees. And what's so fascinating to us is that this is an amazing story that should be told, not just in Irvinstown and to the people of Irvinstown, but to the people of Northern Ireland as a whole. So it very much is something that uh, we're enthusiastically uh, supporting. In this particular project, there has been research uh, into the history of the trustees and really how they have, have got through a hundred very, very difficult years in Northern Ireland. But also on the lighter side, there will be the uh, uh, various festivals linked into it, fair days um, and other activities, which I suppose gets across to the broader people of Irvinstein and beyond really the value of the work 
that the trustees have done for this period of time? I, I have been very proud to be a member of the trustees because I felt that uh, I, from my Christian point of view, we should be working together for the good of all. And we've tried to put that into practice. If, if you come to a trustee meeting, you don't sit down, the Protestants at one side and the Catholics at the other side. We just sit down however you come in and sit down and have a chat. And it's more like a family get together, really. The example of the trustees, uh, I would think, has been a great benefit to the community. I think that the most important part of the trustees, apart from the economic development with which they've been associated, has been the development of sound community relations. Learning how to live together and understanding one another's problems. The value of this project to the trustees is reaffirming the work that they have done and hopefully gives them great confidence for the next hundred years. To the wider community, and I would, when I think of the wider community, I'm thinking of the, even the people of Northern Ireland as a whole, it is that there are some very good examples of partnership and people working together that, you know, through the heritage story, uh, uh, shows us, I think, an awful lot of hope for Northern Ireland today. I think it's a fantastic example of that. Thank you.